our experience of music is subjective, so arguing about the value and meaning of a particular artist's work in opposition to work we consider of lesser merit is silly. Interesting thoughts for a guy with music critic next to his name, no. Regardless, clarifying argument is often cathartic, discourse is often a good thing, and reflecting on our own inclinations with enough discipline to effectively present them in language an even better one. Which is a long way of saying Radiohead being passed over for induction into the Rock and Roll Hall bums me out, but not as much as the band's poor showing in the fan poll portion of the voting does. I find it disheartening that this daringly original band whose work continues to stretch the envelope of popular music possibility, while simultaneously maintaining immense commercial popularity, came in last in that survey. I was moved to seek out someone to share my despair. I thought I had found one in the form of Brad Osborne, assistant professor of music theory at the University of Kansas School of Music. Osborne is also a major Radiohead fan. In his book Everything in Its Right Place, Analyzing Radiohead, he offers insight into the music of the world's only arena-sized art rock band. I asked Osborne why Radiohead, one of the most influential bands of the past 25 years, got snubbed by Rock Hall voters. He told me to get over it. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head with the 25 years part, Osborne replied. An artist is only eligible for induction 25 years after their first release, which means that this was only the first year Radiohead was eligible. The short list of bands that made it into the hall in their first year of eligibility is legendary, The Beatles, Led Zeppelin. A generation later, Pearl Jam, Nirvana. So, I have no doubt that Radiohead will be inducted, despite their apathy, or even antipathy, toward the Rock Hall, soon. They might just have to wait one or two years. Ouch I now feel like an overzealous sports fan who wants their favorite player to win the MVP trophy at all costs, and then pouts when it doesn't happen. Let's push the Rock Hall snub to the side, then. Why did Osborne feel that Radiohead warranted the sort of rigorous examination he afforded them in his book? The answer, revealingly, is written into the music itself and its primary songwriter, Tom York. York tends to play what feels right at the piano, which often transcends norms of classical voice leading, Osborne said. For example, in Pyramid Song, Burn the Witch, and a host of others, he just moves a bunch of major chords all over the piano, which obliterates our classical understanding of key signature, forcing us to hear a broader tonal palette as the tonal center for a particular composition. I like the whole forcing us to hear a broader tonal palette idea, because I do tend to look at art as an expression of defiance, against the dying of the light, against mediocrity, against the dulling qualities of rote repetition, and so forth. Maybe I love Radiohead because the band continues to surprise me. Maybe I love them because I hear in their music a minimalism that recalls some of Miles Davis' late 60s and early 70s electric albums, the looped phrasing patterns of Steve Reich, and the grandiosity and thematic development of latter-day Beatles and Pink Floyd.